I used to work in my uncle's convenience store in Toronto. This one girl, she was asking me, where are you from? I am from Afghanistan. And she's like, no, seriously, where are you from? I was like, I am from Afghanistan. She goes, no, no joking. Seriously, where are you from? I'm like, whatever. I'm like, I'm from Italy, whatever, you know? When I asked her, why wouldn't you believe me that I'm from Afghanistan? She's like, no, you don't have the beard. You don't have uh, the turban. That's the image that today's media is giving the Afghans or terrorists. Out of Afghanistan, there is no information about what's going on in Afghanistan. Everyone is only hearing about the bomb explosion, about the activity of their troops, and it's a very artificial report. There is no clue from the realities of Afghan life. I remember Afghanistan being a really beautiful place. I have very fond memories of it, of my childhood, of my friends. This beautiful country is Afghanistan. This is the country of our forefathers. This country is my heart. I was born in Canada to an American mother and an Afghan father. As a child, I cherished my father's stories of his homeland and his promise to take me to Afghanistan when the war ended. But it never has. One bloody conflict rolled into another, forcing millions of Afghans to flee their homes. For those who find refuge, there is great relief. But how complete is their peace when their new home is at war in the land of their birth? My country fights a war in my father's country, and I look on with a growing sense of confusion. Are we helping Afghans? Or just adding fuel to a decades-old conflict? Grana Auridunku, Zema, Deva Bahar, Yodel Bias, Tasubahis Matki, the De Charsham Bepa Mazigar Bandi, Us Alandi Pakandahar Kishper, Baji the Mazigar, Auzabayam Sasa Saret, the Lassiba Jotter, Max Tanapuri, Noch Palesimus and the Matarasta, we put Sipuru one at the Wapinze at the Rana FM is on the air in Kandahar. Young Afghan Canadians broadcast 24 hours a day from a state of the art facility half a world away in Kingston, Ontario. My favorite part of this job is, I guess, knowing that I'm actually doing something for my country, for the city that I was actually born in. I'm the first Kandari female broadcaster in the history of Kandahar. Rana is part of the Canadian military strategy, a way to influence young Afghans living in the conflict zone. Its exact location is a closely guarded secret. I got uh, relatives there, but they don't know that I work here. It's not really, a, you know, it's for their safety, for young Afghan Kandaris. They can't see you. They don't know your real name. They don't know where we are in the world. They tried asking us, but then we just tried to change the subject. Or we say, we're located in your heart. I don't know. They don't know that this is a radio station owned and operated by the Canadian forces. They don't have a clue. Rama, 
Ren Armin's light and the branding statement for the radio station is light in your life. Basically, we're targeting or looking at uh, an 18 to 25 year old um, audience. In other words, the people that are going to rebuild Afghanistan, the new Afghans, if you like, people that may not be full of the old ideas. And so we've, we've come up with this program concept of, 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 of modern Southeast Asian, basically uh, Afghan pop culture. So we can get messaging, news, information, anything that we want to our target audience. We don't do propaganda. We're just doing news and information. Uh, and our presenters are laughing, they're smiling, they're not saying to them, um, you should be doing this, more like, you know, what about trying this? For the last year, the Afghans and the football and the football and the tournament of the world are in the world. For the tournament that the Pakistan is in the world, the Afghan football and the Pakistan is in the world. The Afghan football is a very good coach, and the Afghan football is a very good coach, and the Afghan football is a very good coach. The Afghan football is a very good coach. در زیاد اکراه چه خزینه لوگواری با دنور بدنی از آو سرا دویختو دکوتاور لپارا خواله یا بندی آو داو درنا خبرن آو داو درنا افیان خبرن My name is Yasir Fatimi I think I am famous in Kandahar It's nice You live in a country like Canada you could talk with people from Afghanistan, so you could relate yourself to both societies. You know what they are about, what they go through when they are, there, they are at home, what they go through when they are at school, what they go through when they hear about the bomb blast right beside uh, the, the house, right beside their house. They, they ask for a, mu a piece of music, you play them. You play it, that's it, uh, they are happy for two good minutes. In 24 hours, you give them a good two minutes. That's, I think it's a big accomplishment for us. I have never known Afghanistan to be peaceful. I, since I'm born, I have seen uh, Soviet Union's uh, tanks on Afghanistan's uh, road. I have seen uh, Taliban searching innocent people. I have seen I have seen uh, Mujahideen fighting among each other. Year 2000, that's when I came to Canada. I walked into Toronto and I see, because it was summertime, you see girls wearing short skirts and walking in, the, because uh, my first job was uh, in, uh, in a convenience store uh, in Queens Beaches. And uh, you see all those girls and you see a lot of, uh, Naked skin, and uh, uh, that, uh, the, uh, and, and you look at it and you're like, wow, wow. The nightlife, nightlife is a huge shock. Uh, every night is party night in downtown. If, if there's a young guy, he wants to be there all the time. What's the nightlife like in Afghanistan? <laughs> <laughs> Nightline in Afghanistan. <laughs> wow. Um. <laughs> Which way is Kabul? Kabul is uh, right here, eh? 10,585 uh, kilometers from here to Kabul. It's a nice. Uh, it's a nice little thing here, eh? You're from Russia, eh? We neighbor the country. I'm from Afghanistan. Moscow is, uh, Moscow right there. 7,337 kilometers. You're closer than me. Yeah, so your ticket is cheaper than me. Ah, it's nice. Before my first birthday, the Soviet Union occupied Afghanistan. Claiming to bring progress, they plunged the country into a devastating war. After a decade of struggle against US and Saudi-funded Mujahideen fighters, the Soviets retreated from a shattered country. 
evidence of their defeat litters the landscape like so many bones. Their proxy war ended. America abandoned and forgot Afghanistan. The land descended into chaos and the Taliban emerged. After September 11th, the US and its coalition of the willing launched what they deemed the war on terror. Afghanistan, haven for Osama bin Laden, was invaded once again. Those who were once freedom fighters were now Islamic extremists. NATO forces claimed reconstruction of the broken land as an objective. In Alberta, a Canadian forces base occupies 500 square miles of rolling prairie, where the military has constructed a replica of Kandahar province. I was impressed by the scale of the illusion, as I toured villages populated by Afghan Canadians, paid to pretend they are back in a war zone. It was a chilling reminder of what Canada is doing in Afghanistan. This is a stand-in for the real thing. No one is practicing peacekeeping here. What we're doing in Wainwright is we're recreating the Afghan experience to play it out here before you live it out over there. We're there to create a better Afghanistan. So it's not a, it's not a robot we're putting down range. It's a thinking, reasoning, frankly selfless person. What that requires is that we have to produce the terrain, the urbanization, the distances, uh, and the geography, there are people that replicates here what you'll see overseas. The only thing we're missing, quite frankly, is the mountains. Uh, the other thing we got to do is produce the, the actors who provide the threat. The Taliban of Afghanistan are being played out here by, by folks who are playing that role. Our soldiers, not only they're familiar with the Afghan environment, they're culturally indoctrinated. It's all part of us trying to be uh, as good as we can in preparing our people, not just to survive in Afghanistan, but actually to win, to, I mean, to create the outcomes in Afghanistan that allow Afghans to win. And we're really thankful for the Afghan Canadians who do this for us. Most of them, if not all of them, treat this not like a job, but almost like a sacred duty. Oh, every day is a new experience. Every day is a good day, of course. In this place, I mean, this once in a lifetime experience, that's for sure. Like we get to ride, see the tanks close by, you get to see the helicopters, Bisons, riding the helicopters, riding the tanks. It's just amazing. This is the best way to actually learn about more, more about Afghanis than just uh, listening to a TV or anything like that. This way they'll get to know that not all the people who has beard and uh, they have this ter like these kind of clothes, they're not Taliban. Yeah. And they're civilians too. And give them a better idea how to communicate with the people and how to approach them and everything. That's what we do, yeah. That's our main job is. That's our main job is, yeah. Wainwright suits the script just fine. The days pass pleasantly between Taliban attacks and catered meals. In Kandahar, Alberta, everything is going according to plan. Out here on the flatlands of Canada's Wild West, we are winning the war. Assalamu alaikum. Mon doctor Cheshem Aston. Assalamu alaikum. Shatora Sensei of Fawase. Kobastam, Cheshme Shumara Monakanam. I'm just the guy, Dr. Cheshem Ha. Sher. Sher, Khub, Khub. Aspa Awi. Aspa Awi. Mai. Mai, Khub. Kangaroo. Kangaroo. That's what we call it in Canada too. Shotor. Shotor, khup, khup. Pump. Pump, khup. Mai. Mai again, khup. Good, Chesham Ha. Good. Tashakur, Tashakur. All these scenarios that they play here are very closely related to what has already happened or what's happening in Afghanistan right now. Like, for example, a day the suicide bombing would go off or a day when the Taliban would attack. Chances are, these are the stories that have, that have already happened.
My name is Sharif Aminzada. I was born in uh, Jalalabad, Afghanistan. Um, I moved to Canada about 12 years ago, and uh, right now I'm working at Wainwright. My job is as an interpreter for the Canadian Army. If it wasn't for the interpreters, the demands and the needs of the villagers and the objectives of the military would never have been met. A few days ago, there was a Taliban attack on uh, one of their villages. They dropped an 18 kilogram bomb. The villagers themselves don't really know if the, it was the Taliban or the NATO forces because it has, it has happened in the past that NATO forces have, have dropped bombs on them. Not, not deliberately, but to actually kill Taliban. They have dropped bombs and they, it has caused them a lot, of, a lot of destruction, a lot of grief. That's what the governor is meeting the PRT commanders for. But so far, the news is that it, it, it must have been the Taliban because no NATO forces have actually uh, claimed responsibility for the attack. I certainly had a very productive meeting with Colonel Akhtar this morning. Sometimes these meetings uh, become a little high-spirited between these village elders and then the commanders, but then the but then the governor is there to kind of cool things off because he has more authority over the mullahs and the maliks. That will encourage a lot of people to come back. I just try to imagine how these villagers would feel in, in Afghanistan for real. I've actually experienced the very first war that broke in Afghanistan during the Mujahideen's time because uh, where we lived, our apartment building was right beside an army base, and that was the very first things that they attacked. One day we were sitting for dinner, and uh, my mom set up the table, all the food was there, and uh, we all got up to, uh, to wash our hands. And just as we were walking through, a rocket hit right in the center of the table. It made a huge hole on our, on our floor. We could actually see the, the other apartment from beneath us. The surprising thing about it all is that we all got up together, and that's what saved us. I would always sleep with my mom, like just kind of hold, hold her really tight, because that, that, that did kind of make me feel a little safer if I held tighter. <laughs> Um, I remember like my mom sometimes would tell me, you know, like, okay, you're suffocating me. When I was young, I was thinking that I will be able to bring peace. For me, peace was having a country without hearing the voice of guns. During the Taliban, then we thought that no, there will not be any hope for having peace in the country. Nadia Hanifi was living in Mazari Sharif when the Taliban occupied her city. She witnessed the massacre of thousands of ethnic Hazara. After all she's lived through, I wonder why she would want to remember Afghanistan at all. The place that we were living, it had the smell of the dead bodies for almost Two weeks, then the Taliban came and 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 uh, took all of them. The dogs were coming and eating these dead bodies. Same time, most of the people was not able to find a grave for their dead bodies. So they grave, they make a grave in the, the, the their houses. Nadia was luckier than most Afghan women. Born into a liberal middle-class family, she was able to attend university. A passionate advocate for women's rights, Nadia was forced to seek refuge in Canada after a recent attempt on her life. I feel that I'm in a secure place where no one will touch me, but I'm not sure about my future. Will I be able to integrate myself with this society? This is me at the opening day of the first uh, women radio station, which was managed by 
all women and was most of the programs were focusing on women. Everyone was saying that, well, women would not be able to manage a radio station. It's not the business of women to manage how they're gonna uh, turn on the, you know, this technical machines for radio station. But now we have technical staff, women technical staff. I began working with media when I was nine years old, and I was always thinking that when I will be the head of the radio station. Then when I set up this radio station and I got the kind of ownership on this radio station, I, I thought that I, I, I reached to my dream, so that's why I'm happy. When I'm seeing this picture, I'm really proud of doing a big thing for women and make me to cry. I don't want to cry. Most of my friends are still there. I'm always worried. When you're inside, you don't have this fear. But when you're outside, you always think that in this event or in this explosion, someone has been killed. Maybe it, there was your friend, your relative. People think that if you're in West, you will be lucky. No. You want to go back home? Definitely. Decades of continuous war have forced millions of Afghans from their homes, draining the country of an educated middle class. Many live in refugee camps in border countries like Iran and Pakistan. Thousands of more fortunate families have escaped to the West. What I remember before coming to Canada was uh was the immense excitement of, uh, of actually coming to America because I had never heard of Canada. I didn't really think much about the West until, until we moved to Pakistan and, and from there when we started learning English. And I would have these fantasies of like how things are gonna be there, their, their hamburgers and <laughs> how they studied at school, their houses. It was a completely different world that I was coming to. Some of the most uh, challenging differences for me were, uh, were in school, actually. In Pakistan, I remember if it was morning, the, the entire class would stand up and say, good morning, miss, and we would never look at them eye to eye. Teachers have a higher status than your parents. One of the funny stories that, uh, that happened on my first day is <laughs> I actually went to school with a suit because I figured, you know, this is Canada. It's, it's a, such a higher society. And the teacher walks in, <laughs> and I stand up thinking that everyone else is gonna stand up too, and I say, good morning, miss. <laughs> Everybody give me like this, this weird, like they're like, oh, what's, what's up with this guy? I came to Canada because uh, after high school, there weren't uh, any uh, higher education available for people who were not involved in the way that Taliban were governing the country. My father had to send me for higher education to Canada. I do have a lot of family in Canada, but parents, they're in Pakistan. When I need someone to put his hand on me and say, everything's gonna be all right, uh, that's when you, you miss your parents. Yeah. Rana FM. Visa, visa, visa. Zim Zmaray, Zmaray. Atasa Tabarama, visa, visa, visa. What I'm doing, it's the best I could do right now for Afghanistan. I have a show. Every week I talk about different country. 
today I have a show about Brazil. They wouldn't know anything about Brazil. They would, they would think everyone in Brazil plays soccer. That's the only thing they might know about it, yeah. Like this coming week, I'm talking about Norway. I tell them what's the population of uh, Norway, the national cuisine. I play their songs too, like Norwegian songs. So people from Kandahar, for two hours, they're having a trip of uh, uh, Norway. So I call it visa. It's like I'm giving them the visa of a country. Yeah. Robert, the soldier, he was in Kandahar for like uh, four months. He's telling me, he's like, you're like a star here. They have this huge gate. He had to put a radio there because everybody liked it. Everybody liked their radio. So he had to put a, by their camp or whatever they used to, like the military base was, he had to put a radio by the, by the gate. Actually, I had so many uh, male listeners who they make their wives and their sisters and their mothers, uh, they make them listen to me because I give them like interesting, you know, cooking tips and cooking recipes and, you know, beauty tips. So it's just really interesting. They, they love it. The two things we can't talk about is we can't talk about politics and we can't talk about religion on the radio. What are they going to get from politics and religion? Whatever you present to them, they will actually go with the flow. I'm not touching this society. When you don't have job, you cannot say I was live here, you know? You're a refugee. I'm participating in a couple of university classes. I'm studying French. And I'm still in contact with my Afghan colleagues. The most that I miss from Afghanistan is my job and the challenge that I was facing day by day. It was giving meaning to my life. I'm always thinking about Afghan women. I feel guilty. I'm secure here and there is a still woman in my country. They are afraid of their life. Zakia Zaki was an outspoken woman. She was receiving threats from many political groups. They entered to her house in midnight and killed her. It was shocking. You know, when you think that, well, they have been able to kill your friend, you always think that it will happen to you. The Afghan government only have control over their own palace with the American army groups around the palace. Everyone has their own agenda. There is lots of projects going on, but uh, none of them are bringing any fundamental changes in the life of Afghan people. The 2004 elections confirming the Karzai government were greeted by many with hope. Visiting the country a few years later, I cannot find anyone who was optimistic about the future. For all our rhetoric about rebuilding the country, life in Afghanistan has only become more difficult.
Hala iş kıyam ki ne? O mağım ege bir kapışam. Ne kadar var, mağazacır dedim. Zeri töpü çara, bambar dedim. Değil bir layak o çiz yine şöyle. Az çiş koç başım. This government is only a means in the hands of foreigners. Afghanistan has been occupied. The people will think so. It is like in the time of uh, uh, Russian invader. The same thing. The same situation. At the time of Russian invaders, also, all the day long the fight was going on. People were killed, innocent people were killed. What is not good? Peace is better. People love peace, they want peace, they are thirsty of peace, because they have experienced too many wars. ساختمانی که میجا شروع شده وارم ببینه مگر رو وام میگم میخوای که امکاناتش باشه دیم میتونیم ما بیشینه اجازه داره وام این وین رید ای فیل در ام دوینگ سمتنگ تا هلپ ای هد اکشلی تولد سم اف مای فرینز اباوت دیز سیشنز اند 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 اسد ام اف دی وانید تو جوین این سم اف دیم سید در او یو نو ات دیتس that's actually being a traitor towards your own country. And I never understood that. I'm like, I'm like, how's, how's that me being a traitor? You know, like, I'm not, I'm not helping, helping them to take over the country, you know what I mean? And if I find out that my help is actually being translated into something not beneficial to the Afghan people, then I'm not going to be a part of it. Rana FM. I'm, uh, I, I made a little, a little Afghanistan here and uh, it makes me comfortable, like, it's nice. I talk with people out there, so it's, it's good. Thank you very much. Now we have the news for today. Thanks, David. Thank you. That's uh, our news for today, right now, and it's all in English right now. Uh, I have to translate it in Pashto, then edit it, and then uh, record it. There are things that we don't want to talk about it a lot which has to do a lot with the war if i have four news about war i don't need the fifth news then i have to drop one of them because i need something there for people to look at and say okay you know what that's a good news so i don't want to deliver all the bad news to them i understand yasser's desire to help but rana's upbeat programming rings hollow in the ruins of nato's project as Rana FM delivers good news, the war continues to worsen. We have a lot of warnings in our radio station. Stay away from Taliban recruiting centers. Don't go close to the army uh, cars. When they stop you, do as they say. <laughs> وګوره هغه سرتیری په لاس اشاره ورته کوي چې مرا نه زده کېږا او لري اوسا هغه با چې سرتیری وګوري او ملګری د رښتیا وای د هاف ټو هاف ات ان در مایند دس از هاو ای اکټ وین ای ام بیهایند ا کانوای وین ای ام فرنت اف ا کانوای اند وین ای اپروچ ا ان ارمی افیسر Afghans did not ask the international communities to come to Afghanistan. It was the international communities and it was the NATO who decided to come to Afghanistan and struggle against terrorism after 11 September. Since they are not familiar with the geographical area, this is a mountain country, so for communication with the communities, they are most of the time using the ex-warlords, or they are making alliance with them to at least have security of themselves. Most of people think that all this NATO are American. Oh, 
only educated people knew that or distinguished that this uh, troops are coming from the different countries. So the common people consider it the American invasion, especially when there is bombing by the NATO forces, which is causing the killing of the common people. The best way for NATO is to support Afghan police and, and Afghan army and to get out of Afghanistan. About civilians dead, I do the news. I hear every day, 20 died, 10 died, 15 died. It's not a number. You're talking about people who got killed. And it's easy for those people who have dirty aims in Afghanistan for their heroin war to drive these people into becoming an insurgent into this suicide bombing because they don't know how to read and write. If you tell them God has promised you 72 virgins and go kill yourself right now, there is a bazaar, there's a market, and if you kill yourself there, you'll go to heaven just now with 72 virgins. I pray for my country. I want people to love their lives. In Wainwright, I, I mostly do the interpreting for the high-ranking officers and for the governor. A lot of the Afghans that are here, um, most of them are educated. Most of, most of them hold university degrees. Most of them hold graduate degrees. One of them was a physics professor at the university, and he drives a taxi here. Another one worked with the government. He also drives a taxi here. There is one uh, particular role player here. He's quite old. He was involved in movies for 25 years. He, he was a producer, he directed films, and he, he wrote scripts, he writes poetry. When I asked this gentleman what he does outside of Wainwright, he tells me that he, uh, he does a night cleaning job at a restaurant. It saddens me immensely. In Wainwright, the role players prepare for a major simulation. To help maintain the illusion of a battle zone, we are asked to dress as an Afghan TV crew. It's impossible not to get caught up in it. A NATO helicopter carrying coalition forces will crash in hostile territory, challenging the soldiers to fight the Taliban while dealing with civilians. I want to believe that Canada's intentions are noble, that we are in Afghanistan to help, 
but watching this staged battle only brings home the tragedy of the real situation. This illusion is far from complete. The blood and bandages are just part of the charade. The reality of our mission in Afghanistan is failure. In our quest to rid the world of terror, ordinary Afghans come second. They're forced to live in the midst of war. We were actually uh, farmers today, and uh, we saw uh, a plane getting crashed. We were supposed to go to the helicopter, like try to rip the parts from the helicopter, because that's what back home they do. As much as the stuff they can get to sell, because they have no food, no money, so they want to rip the parts and all that. But the best part was, because of the beard and the clothing, all the soldiers were suspicious of me. They were thinking I was Taliban, so they wouldn't let me come close by them. We'd rather for the soldiers to learn everything here. So don't about our it. culture? About our culture, people, everything, how everything goes. Rather than them going back there and like... And get shot and have no idea of it. Yeah, how the people react, how people talk. No that. matter what, we're all here, human beings. We, we're all equal. We're, there's no big, there's no small. We all end up in, in, in the sand. I've actually seen some of the other role players break down. I remember in one of the previous sessions, we had an Afghan lady who actually started crying. It was a mass casualty day with all the special effects with the guts spilling out and, and all that. Yeah. Yesterday, I was, I was just lying in one of the cots. It was downtime and uh, I was just about to fall asleep when I when I actually fell from my bed because an air jet just flew over our tent. And that reminded me of the instant when that rocket hit hit our house. For that split second, I actually thought I was back in Afghanistan reliving my memory. In Kabul, a city accustomed to war, people carry on. Amidst the poverty and the violence, they try to get by. Afghanistan's most famous living pop star, Farhad Daria, was exiled under the Taliban. Today he looms over Kabul, loved inside and outside Afghanistan. He performs around the world to a growing diaspora, hungry for a taste of home. The fall of Taliban was announced by a piece of music, not by any announcer, just by a piece of music. That was something. And uh, that was my music. Open bag, no food, no water, no cameras. You're not passing me. Whenever the world starts talking about Afghanistan, they start talking about troubles. But majority of troubles are coming from outside. Politics uh, failed in Afghanistan somehow. Uh, I'm not talking about politics inside Afghanistan. In general, the world think that uh, we are, if I say it, very simple, we are bad people, bad guys. We only have bad faces. We, we don't deserve this face, not at all. We know how to love, we know how to sing, we know how to hug you. Uh, I'm just trying, I'm just trying to do something, to deliver messages that are missing. Between ashes, between dusts, between wars. Ha 
Give up life. This is not the only time that people experience war. But the people, they have their hopes. I'm counting on the next generation of Afghans or more educated than my generation. I'm still hoping for their future and for their ability to bring peace in the country. When will you have a chance to go back? If any political change happened in Afghanistan. It's a miserable thing that Afghanistan is going through. If there's an Afghan in Canada and everywhere else in the world, do whatever you can to help my people. God bless me, my family, and bring peace to my country. I've always known from a very young age what I've always wanted, to become a doctor. When I do finish my studies, I do want to go back to Afghanistan and practice there as a physician. Actually be there, me providing the help. That's what I really want to do. Jiggy, jiggy, dasha, mariz, la, da, dasha, mariz, la, da, dasha, la, la, 